UAP or airborne objects that when encountered cannot be immediately identified. With regard to the importance of transparency, the department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots in the west. Oh my gosh, dude. U.S. Navy personnel recorded what appears to be triangles, some flashing. The video was taken through night vision goggles with a single lens reflex camera. Well, I would say, I mean, it's a pretty high profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, who else is doing it? There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to UFO We Want to Know. This is May 4th, 2024. Um, before I begin, as I always do, this is dedicated to those who have been ridiculed, made fun of, and dragged through the media for the last 76 plus years. And I dare say it's going to continue uh, if the government keeps uh, pushing back uh, their narrative that there's nothing to see here. Uh, I got behind on my videos and photos uh, for the last few weeks, so... I want to dedicate this show uh, strictly to this facility that I that I tape out of. Um, I caught uh, I got seven uh, videos for you to see, and they were all taken right above this studio. So let's uh, go on with the first video. And I've got, um, like I said, seven videos. In this first segment, we have um, thirteen photos along with the two videos. And what you're going to see here is um, a UFO that came flying down to the upper left, coming down towards that tower there uh, that reaches a few hundred feet in the air. You can see it was a ghostly image, but it, um, it just came floating down. Now, I didn't, I didn't actually see this when I was videotaping. I taped the tower all the time because I seemed to get UFOs flying by it. And as you'll see as we go through the, through the uh, hour here, you'll, you'll see other... Uh, UFOs, but isn't this interesting how it looks like it's just morphing through our atmosphere? Uh, why it was doing this um, uh, in that kind of motion is beyond me. Maybe it was uh, having issues. Now, we did slow this down 70% uh, because it, it came down a lot faster than that. As you can see, the leaves aren't even moving in that tree. But uh, we had to slow it down because I wanted you to get the, uh, the gist of it as it was coming down. Uh, let's loop it uh, a couple more times, and then we'll get on to uh, what we actually got as far as steals, and then we, we analyzed it uh, through the uh, 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 remastering process. This will be the last loop here. Quite interesting. And there's the tower in its height, and you can see the, the image there. And as we go through this, I'm going to try and get in closer. Now, this, this uh, image here, I call it a ghostly image because it wasn't very, very uh, dense from what I could see. But as uh, I went through it, I started to use uh, uh, in-depth filtering systems because uh, when you get something that looks like just a flake flying in the air, even a, a, a moth, uh, you, you can't get a lot of um, density in it. So uh, by using your filter systems, you can actually get a better resolution from it. So uh, as I go through these right here, and I'm trying to uh, give you a visual, visualization of what it may be, um, as much as I tried, uh, I didn't have a lot of luck doing this. Um, so what I thought to myself was, uh, just do the best you can. They get the idea. They actually saw it flying. Now you notice on this particular one here, uh, you have a, a, a center mass and you got uh, some um, uh, points to the, just to the left of it, uh, it that came out. Uh, that could be part of it. Uh, again, it was ghostly, so whatever this craft uh, was made of, 
it sure wasn't showing its density, at least in our atmosphere. And again, I, I wanted to point out that there, there, what, there, where it was at uh, when it was coming down over this tower. I want to, I want to stress the point that it's going over the tower for, for reasons. Uh, some people say, well, you know, it could have been just something floating in the air. No, this was something that was coming down um, towards that tower area. So make no mistake. Next video that we're going to be showing here is another one over this facility, but it was of the sun. I was pointing the camera straight up. And as I said, these all these are being taken at um, this facility where I tape my shows out of. There were countless UFOs flying right above our heads. And uh, you're going to notice that uh, these videos were taken uh, between 11 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock at night. Um, and uh, at that point in time, I got all these UFOs in, the, in these videos, and it was just a remarkable day. Now, this was taken April 17th, as they all were. Every one of these videos are going to be taken at April 17th, 2024, at 11.07, this one here, 11.07, AM and uh, again this is taken at this studio's location so uh, quite interesting that you could you could be uh, you know taping your show and then you walk out and you start videotaping and you put another show together as I'm doing today and this would be the the last loop You can see that it was countless UFOs. I didn't count them. I tried to. Sometimes um, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll try to uh, do the first top half of the sun and I'll count how many are going up there and I'll do the bottom and see how many are there and then I'll, I'll get a pretty good idea of how many we got because some of them are really just moving uh, so fast and they zigzag that you, it's just very hard to count. Now I concentrated on one of them because it was a rather large UFO and uh, make no mistake it was a UFO and uh, again this taken on, on April 17th at 11.07. Now uh, you're going to find that I have three at 11.07 and you're wondering how do you get three videos this long at 11.07. Uh, when I take them, I take them for only 10 seconds. Now this was done at slow motion. And in slow motion, you, it can spread out for 50, 53 seconds. And uh, so all we do is we go right to the, the source of the UFOs. So in other words, you're squishing all that time into from, from 53 seconds. It was originally only 10 seconds. That shows you how fast these UFOs are flying in our atmosphere. Okay. This is it again. And you're going to notice these UFOs kind of odd because it, it had some uh, uh, pendulum sticking out of it. I don't know exactly what uh, this UFO was uh, uh, was made of because, and I don't know if it was accompanied by three different um, UFOs. Uh, you can make your, your mind up yourself as, as we go through this. Uh, it, definitely one on, on the bottom and then one upper right and then the other one. It could be a shadow uh, or remnants of it, but the way it was it was flying, you would think it was coming down. It wasn't. It was going upper left, which makes it even odder than that. It starts to get some colorization in it, as you can see, and as the colors, uh, as we get closer to this, you're going to see the colors more vibrant. Um, this uh, particular UFO here. Um, as it was going up, uh, again, I, I, I can't tell you if it was uh, more than, than one, uh, but uh, you see the one that was on the upper left, it started to dissipate. Um, so as we got closer and closer, uh, I noticed that, uh, that indeed there was maybe two. Uh, again, when they were flying, I did stop motion on it, and then I had to go play it back and look at my times 40 magnifier. That's the best I have as far as looking at the video itself. And I noticed that uh, it was going uh, like up and then to the right and then it banked to the left. So real quick motion. Uh, obviously, we're talking about inertia here. 
Uh, there's no other explanation for it. Of course, we're talking in human uh, terms here, inertia. I'm sure that these intelligent beings in these craft, they don't use the word inertia. They, they most likely have uh, other, uh, uh, if you want to call it names or references. Uh, but uh, I, I do it for, for uh, the, the sake of understanding here. And I noticed that uh, a lot of the uh, comments that are coming out of uh, uh, the government and uh, NASA and some of these uh, Air Force pilots and naval pilots, um, when, when I go back to some of my archives, I noticed that they, they say things that they bank. You know, when they're, they're going uh, supersonic and they seem to bank left or bank right. And they use those that terminology. At the same time, they say, um, I, I, you know, as we were following, we wouldn't dare try the maneuvers they're trying because we wouldn't have a jet. And, of course, they're talking about the G-forces in, involved in this. So uh, quite interesting, though. Yet another uh, close-up of it. And then we got one more. And uh, I want to... I want to make it real clear uh, to people out there. I had uh, quite a few people um, send me messages um, this whole time as we're, as we're looking at this UFO. Uh, take a look at the, um, uh, the, the little colorization there. Uh, that makes it for a, an interest analysis to, I'm sure, scientists uh, to wonder why uh, that appears around the UFO. Uh, but uh, the statements that I was receiving or I should say, I do receive them on my, on my phone, but um, that I was looking at is they're continuously saying that they're still studying these uh, UFOs. And just recently they said they've got another 250 that Arrow and, um, and uh, the NASA scientists were looking at, and they're not finding any conclusive uh, uh, thing they come out and actually say to the public. But uh, they're going to continue on in giving us this BS line as far as they can push it. And I'm sure that uh, it's going to continue on in, until something major happens. And we'll get into that as we go, go through the show. So please stay with us. Hi. I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Pahrump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never before viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO We Want to Know and remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, on this segment here, we have uh, two videos and ten photos. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to continuously bore people if they find that uh, uh, seeing videos in the sun or or uh, photos of these uh, boring. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you um, uh, a point in uh, what I'm doing here in my life. I'm getting these every single day, and I haven't even showed you uh, um, a third of what I have uh, just this year alone. I have to pass up video after video after video, and then um, just put them in the archives. I've got so many of these videos every single day. Uh, matter of fact, just yesterday, uh, I got over 150 UFOs. I can't show them all because I don't have enough time. But I'm trying to give you an understanding. That's how many of these UFOs are flying around your head every single day, every hour of the day. So it's, it's, it's important, I think, for me to stress that point to you and not just think, oh, another video of the sun and, and UFOs flying around. And if, indeed, and if indeed you think there are UFOs flying around, because there are some people who still are not convinced. So let's go on with the first video. And here we've got uh, many UFOs again, and you can see them for yourself. I've had people tell me that uh, they really couldn't see them. So what we try to do is we try to zero in on the sun here. And what I did was I focused on one particular 
UFO as I did the previous one. And that and I do that for a reason, is because it stand they stand out, the ones that I pick. They really do stand out. And when I was doing it, uh, I took the one that was at 10 seconds uh, in the in the video when it starts. But uh, when we get to these videos, a lot of times we have to we have to slow them down because if we don't slow them down, what happens is you miss it. They're flying so fast, and regardless of what uh, you you hear from the media uh, about these uh, UFOs uh, flying in our atmosphere uh, or not flying in our atmosphere or uh, it could be an anomaly, whatever you hear from them, just remember something. You're seeing real UFOs every single week that I'm on the air. Every single week you see these UFOs, they were taken by me with a cell phone, not a $100,000 uh, high definition uh, uh, radio antenna or whatever it may be. I don't spend if I had it, millions of dollars on equipment. I'm using a cell phone to prove my point. You know, so what you're seeing here are real UFOs flying around in our atmosphere. And some of them are going by so fast. Now, at the end of the video, see it, the, the sun kind of move? That was a, uh, at 53 seconds, that UFO was so fast, even at 70%, it still went off the uh, screen that fast. You'll see at the very end when you see the sun start to move. But uh, again, I, I, I have to stress this uh, to the audience out there. These UFOs are in our atmosphere. They're all around. And if scientists want to continue on saying that they're not, there's nothing to see here, there's still no evidence, well, then they need to get themselves another job, uh, maybe a janitorial job. And, and I'm not making fun of jan janitorial people, but uh, they could use the help. After this, we'll go ahead and go to the first photo. As you can see, this is the one that I was concentrating on. And this was interesting because it was kind of elongated, but when you get to the, uh, at the end of it, we're, you're gonna see something that's kind of interesting. And we're talking uh, about electromagnetic charge uh, from this uh, UFO here. Um, it uh, seemed to give off a charge uh, right here, the dark area around it. Uh, the UFO is in the center part. A lot of times they'll show you dark and they'll show you, show you light around it. I think it depends on how close or far away it is from the sun. But uh, uh, the, the, the last photo of this one, before this one, is going to show you what I'm talking about here. Take a look at this, this image for a minute here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to stay with it for a couple of minutes. Uh, this, is, this was really interesting. Look at the magnetic field all around the UFO, not touching it, but it's all around it. It's, it, it looks like somebody drew a, um, a, a, with a crayon all around this. It's not. What you're seeing is the craft in the center of it, the elongated craft, and then you're seeing a magnetic field all the way around this craft. That's why I keep saying to, to the audience that these craft are not touching our atmosphere. They're, they're protected. They've got some kind of layer of protection. Whatever that may be, that's what it is. I believe it's an electromagnetic field because if you take a look at this craft, there's nothing touching it. Take a look at it for yourself. Scientists have to be interested in, in pictures like this because uh, the, if the UFOs are flying at such fantastic speeds, how do they do that? It, it's it's uh, To a human being, it's, a, it's in the realm of impossibility because we don't understand it. We can't process it. Okay, so let's go on to the next video. And as you can see, this is another one in the sun. And what I did here is I went from uh, daylight to, to, to darkness. Now this was taken at 11.07 again in, uh, in, the, in the morning and I turned it to a black and white. And I did that for a reason, because um, the, the uh, uh, UFOs that are flying around here uh, could be seen a lot better for the point that I'm going to be trying to put across. At, uh, because we had uh, to uh, shorten this a little bit, it knocked me off. But at about 48 seconds, a ghostly UFO heading southwest could be seen, uh, but it was very odd. And that's why I concentrated on it. Uh, this UFO, like the very first one I showed in the first segment, 
Well, there's a kind of ghostly image, uh, but it's traveling so fast. And you saw it go by there at the end. When you see the sun moving, that's the end of the video. But it, it took off so fast that if we slowed it down, the video would be three, three four minutes. And uh, I wanted you to see all the UFOs flying around the area of the sun's glare. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice way if you want to go out and do it yourself. You can take a video. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've got the capabilities. You can take a video of the sun. No more than 10 seconds, please, because you can ru ruin your optics in your, on, your, on your phone camera. And then uh, with your filtering system that's built into your phone, you can go from uh, daylight like this to black and white like this, excuse me, from uh, blue to, to dark. And it looks like this was taken at, at night. But it wasn't. This was taken 11 o'clock in the morning. And it gives you, it's kind of easy on the eyes, I think. But if you want to do this and then blow it up in your phone, you'll be amazed at what you see. You see all kinds of movements from UFOs. And you can see the, the fantastic maneuverability that these craft have. They just don't go in straight lines. Some of them will, will, will be flying into the sun's area and then they'll stop abruptly. And they'll make a 90 degree turn and go off the other way. It is, I've, I've seen this hundreds and hundreds, I should say thousands of times I've seen it where now uh, my, my brain is immune to it. When I see something do a fantastic maneuver, I just shrug it off like, okay, yeah, I know, they can do that. And it's, it's one of the things where you, you learn when you, when you try to analyze something, you get kind of immune to it where some people will jump up and get all excited. You will say, yeah, uh, so what? In, in, in this phenomenon that I do, it is a, an interesting uh, a, a issue to look at because a lot of people that I show, when I show my cameras on my phone, uh, what I've taken, excuse me, the videos I've taken, uh, they, they say, well, man, he goes, I could never get tired of that. Well, you know, after thousands and thousands of these, uh, it, it, you get numb to it. And I, and I kind of hate saying that because it's such an interesting phenomenon. Uh, for instance, if it, and just imagine if one of these ships ever landed in a major metropolitan area. Uh, yeah, that would get the attention of everybody walking around it. Even the skeptics would have to stop and look and say, yeah, uh, that's a big paper bag, bag in the air. But uh, here, uh, for your viewing, I did it black and white so you can see it. So we'll go, we'll, this will be the last loop here, and we'll go to the first picture. And the one we're going to be looking at is the one at the last, the last when it when it uh, passed the sun on the right side of your screen. It should be coming up. While we're waiting for it, I want to thank Meredith for being such a great watcher. Now, here's the, here's the image here, and it was a little ghostly. It was ghostly, uh, but um, it was very, very fast. And here's the interesting point about this. this. This craft was flying so fast, even when we slowed it down, it didn't leave any entrails. It was a solid mass, but yet when you see the close-up of it, um, it, it doesn't leave anything. It's, it's almost almost completely circular. Now, using the software that I use that comes with the, the, the phone, um, it gives me pretty good detail. Remember, I have 200 megapixels, so it does help out an awful lot. Um, I had phones a few years back that I could never do what I'm doing with this phone here, the Galaxy S23. As we get closer, uh, you can see it's, it's not leaving anything. But yet it is. Now, it seemed to have a, a hole in the uh, little bit to the left of the center. But this craft was moving. Uh, I can't tell you, uh, I can't begin to tell you uh, when I was looking at the video, I missed it for the first maybe 10, uh, 10 showings of the video. I, when I go over these, I don't look at them just uh, three or four times. I go through them anywhere from uh, 5 to uh, 10, 15 times uh, every video. I just go over and over and over. And basically, it gives me an idea of what I'm, what I'm 
going to miss if I don't pay attention to detail. And as you can see, there, there seems to be a hole a uh, little bit to the left of it, but it was going from left to right. And I thought this, this was really, really interesting. That it can be going that fast and not leave any kind of entrail to it like a lot of UFOs do. Uh, if you find this interesting, please contact me here at UFO we want to know at gmail.com and let me know your, your, uh, your thinking of it. What do you think this is? And for, for those of you who write me all the time, such as, such as uh, Meredith and Richard um, out of Los Angeles, uh, I, I appreciate you, your correspondence. I really do. Stay with us, please. Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never before viewed videos and photos taken by myself all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO We Want to Know and Remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, on this, we have two videos and 11 photos to show you. Um, as I was saying, if you're just joining us, uh, I've got seven videos uh, all from this studio location. And uh, I was going to push them back, but these are all from April 17th. Uh, I, I kept pushing everything back because I was doing other, other things uh, uh, to get sh the shows together. But I have to show these because uh, I've got more than seven videos on this particular day. Uh, I've got around 15, but I wanted to show you the what I think is the best of the 15, so I brought seven of them with me to show you. And these are all done here at the studio, and uh, if you've missed it, you can also go to my page at uh, the Prompt Alien Guy, and you can see all the videos there. Please uh, give me a like and subscribe, and you'll get all the information uh, that comes out of my shows. So let's go on with the first video. And what we're seeing here, again, is the sun, but you're going to see a lot of UFOs flying around here. There are approximately 50 to 60 UFOs, um, that you, that, but we're going to concentrate on one particular one, and you'll see that when we do the stop image, and it will be the left of the sun. It was uh, kind of interesting because it was kind of a, a, a bell-shaped, if you will. But um, uh, as I was saying, there's 50 to 60 UFOs, and I started counting them, and I, I just kind of lost my way. Uh, but if you if you look, you don't have to look hard because there are some very large UFOs flying in and around the sun's uh, 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 view here, the 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 um, aurora of the sun. Uh, if in past videos, I've told people that uh, the reason why I take a lot of pictures in the uh, sun, or I should say, videos, is because when the uh, UFOs who are most likely brushed aluminum. Uh, when they hit the sun's ray or get close to it, they illuminate. And um, maybe they don't know that. Uh, but And that could be a vulnerability on their part. And I'm sure that the, the government has already noticed that uh, because I've been showing these videos for a long time. Uh, I had podcasts before this, uh, so I was showing them back then. But um, if you look at these UFOs flying... Uh, you, you notice the dark area, that, that thing to the right there, that's a lens flare. So I don't want people to think that's a UFO. That's a lens flare and it's shaking right now. And the dark area where it's located, that little, uh, that little uh, lens flare, the UFOs, uh, you can't see them in that particular area, that dark area. It's when they get to the lighter area is when you start seeing them appear. And the larger ones, I believe, are closer to me than the other ones and that's why they're so large and I've had some pretty large ones fly in front of my camera lens and but you can still you still notice that they're far up there but they're a lot closer and uh, even when they're closer they can do these great maneuvers in, in front of your your camera uh, you can see some going seem to be going slow and then other ones are just zooming right on by um, there's no traffic control here they, these craft do what they want to do. This will be the last loop here. So look at that one go by in the bottom. Uh, it just, uh, it was closer, obviously, and larger, 
but you can see UFOs uh, making all kinds of maneuvers. Some, some of them look like they're going to collide with each other, uh, but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, I, I, show, I show, and I always have, and always will show respect for these intelligent beings. Uh, they're not bothering us. Uh, it's man that's bothering man with all the talk about war and, uh, and, and proliferation of nuclear weapons, uh, something we just don't need um, in, uh, on this planet. We need, we need peace. We don't need threats. So this is the one we're going to concentrate on. And if you didn't catch it, it's because it was going quite fast. And the thing I like, the reason why I wanted to do this one here is because it, I, I've had many, many photos of this same object, the same, uh, 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 I, I, I should say, the way it was, the way it looks like it was built, I think I've caught this before. And I went back and looked at some of my archives, and indeed I have gotten a lot of these. So what I'm gonna be working on is I'm gonna be working on um, a, a data, my database where I can get all the ones that look very, very similar, and I'm gonna put them together, and I'm gonna, I'm, Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to put them out to show you just how many of these UFOs are very similar to other ones. Uh, but take a look at this. Now, it was going from right to left, and it wasn't going upward. It was going sideways. So, um, as I said in many of my videos, aerodynamics does not play a part in these uh, UFOs. They, do, they just simply don't play a part. Uh, on this video here, I want you to... to Look at, there's only one, actually there's two UFOs, I concentrated on one. And this UFO, and the reason why I wanted you to see this one, is take a look at the sun. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an odd looking video. Uh, I didn't do anything to the camera, I didn't do any different settings. But I thought this was kind of unusual. This is a video that you're looking at. Take a look at the sun. Uh, if there was maybe some dense clouds going through it, uh, I didn't see it. Uh, when I look up, I, I, I try to get a clear sun. If I see some dense clouds around it, I'll still videotape as long as the sun has got a clear view. Uh, but I didn't notice any clouds when I was videotaping that particular day, uh, April 17th. And this again was taken April 17th. This was taken at 12.55 p.m. So uh, 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 over an hour after the other three previous videos. And uh, still, uh, I didn't notice that, but you can see that UFO going by. I didn't notice the, the sun any different from a, an hour earlier, uh, but uh, quite unusual that uh, I can take video after video, and all of a sudden the sun looks like it was uh, being interfered with, with maybe some kind of a high density cloud cover uh, that I did, didn't notice. Uh, again, when I look up, I don't look directly at the sun, but I look for clouds. And uh, on this particular one, I caught this uh, of this particular scenery here. So this would be the last loop. <clears throat> and then we'll go to the pictures, and I'll show you what that UFO that's just to the left of the sun, you're going to be seeing it go by. And that's what it would look like right there. Uh, this particular UFO, ladies and gentlemen, is really interesting, um, kind of like a flowerly looking UFO. Uh, when we get to the end of the um, pictures, you'll understand what I'm saying. Uh, it was it was unusual, very very dense, and like the previous video from the uh, second segment, you remember how I showed you the electromagnetic field surrounding it. But take a look at this one. So as we get closer to it, you're going to see it. Now on this one here, far away. Uh, without a magnifier, I could see for myself that this UFO uh, seemed to be given off some kind of electromagnetic field. And um, I just got an electromagnetic field a a tester uh, yesterday, and I'm going to be utilizing that when I'm out there videotaping. Uh, not to say that any of the craft are going to be flying over my head uh, directly at me, but it's always good, so when I go out into the field, I have all my meters up and running uh, just, uh, just in case, and it gives me a head, heads up on what the possibilities are going to be, if there's any possibilities. As we get closer, you can see this is surrounded. 
remember the the center part is the density and the outer part the dark that's the cool air that's not now that's according to our scientists and as we get closer you're starting to see what i'm what i'm talking about um you got uh you got three different layers here you got the center mass you got an orange around it and you see that light blue and then you got the dark so um whatever propulsion system that these craft use um it's an enigma to human beings because we're not familiar with it. Um, our, our brains cannot process the unprocessable um, uh, areas of technology that these people are using, these, these beings are using. Um, I call them people sometimes because a lot of people say that they look like us, um, Nordic, uh, if you will, Nordic uh, beings or uh, beings that are, are bi bipedal and so I sometimes use the the, the word being uh, people instead of beings but uh, they're so intelligent that I'm sure that uh, uh, if, when they look at us they're looking at us like we would look at a, a, a pet you know uh, so a little bit intelligent but not intelligible enough to build something um, I'm sure that uh, uh, our technology to them is child's play. Um, who knows? Uh, maybe when they're one or two years old in their age, um, they're, they're uh, building things that uh, our scientists today couldn't even build. That's how, that's how far advanced these, these beings are to us. And I know that because uh, a lot of times when I meditate and a lot of uh, uh, people who are in the... Uh, uh, metaphysical realm they agree with me on that and I've talked to many people about that and they said of course they said because you're in tune to them and uh, uh, I, I can tell you different stories about people who've actually come up to me and told me uh, that I'm connected uh, I have, a, have I've had at least five people tell me that and they don't know me uh, I never met them but um, uh, they tell me that I'm connected to to a higher being and uh, at first I think they're they're thinking religiously and they say no we're talking about aliens we're talking about beings you're connected now how do these people know uh, I know that a lot of people don't believe in in, in myth, mystics but um, I'm a firm believer because these people didn't know me uh, from anybody else and yet they, they they've told me that um, this is the the last photo here but I want you to take a look at it look at the different uh, circles around this particular craft. You got the center density there, a little bit of brown around it, then you got the blue around it, which means that the magnetic field is not touching this craft either. But it kind of reminds me of a flower. But uh, um, this is incredible. And I hope scientists out there who, who are usually out there looking at things like this and saying, well, it could be anything. It could be the optics in your, in your camera or whatever it may be. I hope they understand something. That I take literally hundreds of these videos every single week and I get pictures like this all the time uh, whether it's the capability of my cell phone I don't know uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if other phones can do what this phone does but I do complete shows on it with a cell phone I'm, I'm not using high-tech equipment so uh, for the scientists out there please have your minds open to the possibilities. We'll be back after this message. Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never-before-viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO, we want to know and remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us for the last uh, segment. Uh, I have uh, one video and 22 photos. And what was really interesting about this one is that I was following this UFO and I, I, I took six different stop motions on it. And there was a, a, a second UFO that came into view after about 53 seconds. So let's get on with the video because there's a lot of photos to show you. 
You'll see an arrow on the left side of the screen pop up, and that's the beginning of this UFO's track across the, uh, the screen. You can see it there and follow it. And uh, as I said, I took stop motions of this UFO. Now, we had to actually slow this down again because this UFO was traveling quite fast. Now, if you think that uh, it's still moving fast, wait till you see the UFO that comes up behind it. Now, you're going to notice that it's going to make a motion to come down. Uh, it's kind of like slowing down, and then it comes down, and then another one joins it, and then they split apart. The one you've been watching goes down, and the other one goes up. There's the other one there. It, uh, it's kind of hard for us to follow this UFO all the way through and give you clarity on it. But the second one did catch the first one, this, the one you're watch they're going to be watching right now. It did follow it. It came up where it came up from. Uh, I don't know. Now, when I say up and down, it's, it's the direction of the TV is I'm giving you that directive. Then we're, we're only going to show this twice, but um, this UFO was traveling quite fast. That second one was traveling uh, five times faster than this one. But I noticed that, that when this one was uh, uh, seen to be climbing, it all of a sudden it slowed down and then it started to go down because I believe it saw the other UFO coming at, coming at it. And then when they uh, crossed past on the top of the screen, uh, they split up. This one here started to come down towards Earth. The other one went up towards space. Now it's going to leave the screen there and then the other one's coming up. And you'll be able to see that. And it was streaking on by. Okay, so here is the object that you were following. Now, I'm going to go through these quite quick because I want to show you the end results. I'm going to show all six of them on, on the last uh, photo there. But I took uh, just two pictures of each one. Right? That's what this one looked like. And that's what that one looked like. Look at, kind of like a wedge, doesn't it? It's kind of interesting. It's, it's interesting because this is the same UFO, ladies and gentlemen. It's the same UFO. Now, take a look at this one here. It turned. It's a different, different shape. It's still a wedge, but it's, it, it, the, the UFO actually turned from the previous one. Again, another different shape. Um, shape shifting? Who knows? But uh, how these UFOs are made, uh, as I said, I believe last week I said that I don't believe these are built, these craft, because a, a lot of whistleblowers have said that you can't find rivets, you can't find screws, you can't find any kind of seam. Um, even when the UFO opens up, uh, they said that it's, it's like an invisible door. And yet, they happen. Now you saw that last one, take a look at this one here. Same UFO. As I said, I'm following it through the sky, but I'm doing stop motions on them to um, give you an idea of when you, when you get a UFO and you think, oh, I captured that shape before. Well, this UFO is changing different shapes into different shapes, and uh, it's, it's the same craft that you're seeing on the video. The one you watched uh, and, and the, the video, this is the same UFO. What do you think this one's going to look like? Yeah. Now, um, when this one, this particular one was taken, uh, the UFO seemed to be disappearing. There was, a, there was two points I, that I was watching, and again, I use my optics when I do this. I noticed that the UFO got smaller or it seemed to be disappearing. Now, I don't know which one it is. Uh, when I see something get smaller, maybe, maybe they're, they're starting to cloak or they're starting to uh, work the propulsion system in such a way that it, the optics that, w that we have uh, can't grasp what's happening to the UFO itself. Uh, whether it is a pulsar uh, um, uh, uh, image uh, that is uh, pulsating this craft, uh, that's driving this craft, we don't know. 
but uh, whatever it may be, uh, I would like to find out what this craft was. Now, uh, there was a second craft, and what I did was I just took pictures of it, and it has nothing to do with the six pictures you're going to see at the end, but I did uh, catch another craft on theirs, and I did do a stop motion on that one, and I'll show you what that one looks like when it comes up. But here I wanted you to show you, again, this is the same craft, ladies and gentlemen, same craft. Here I circled it. Um, I circled this, and the reason why I did is because this is not part of it. This is the other UFO that I caught flying over, and this UFO uh, was uh, doing some acrobatics up there uh, that were kind of amazing. And had I seen that before, I think I would have followed that one instead because unlike the one you were following on the, on the one on the right, uh, the one on the left was doing some uh, circles. And uh, I'm not exactly sure why it was doing that. Uh, it didn't follow the original craft that we were, we were looking at, but it came in real quick. It did kind of like a couple of swirls, and then it left the area. So let's, let's zoom in on that and see what it looked like. Uh, a, a kind of wedge shape, uh, the proverbial UFO, if you flip it uh, on, on its uh, axis, it looks like a UFO that we see in a lot of these photos uh, from other people. Kind of interesting. What do you think this is? Let me know at UFO we want to know at gmail.com. If, uh, if not that, uh, you can contact me at the alien. Uh, the prompt alien guy, and the, uh, I, I'll, I'll answer any questions you may have. Let me know how the videos are to you. This is uh, uh, not a video where I uh, paper mache things onto a screen and put it up. You've seen the videos before you see the photos. This is what, what you see. Uh, what you see on the videos is what you see on the photos. Far image of it. And I took one more just to see what that looked like. And it, uh, it, it, it uh, went from that solid mass into that. And that's because it started to move away at a fantastic speed. Now, I'm going to show you the six photos that we did on the very first one you were looking at. Those are, this, this is the same UFO, the same UFO that uh, I followed through the video like you did. And I had, uh, uh, unlike you, I had the chance to slow things down um, and analyze them. And I also have the capability of getting my software involved and where I can remaster something and then put filters through uh, certain images of it and I can get different types of looks. But on these images here, I played around with it. I spent almost two days on this and a lot more than, than I wanted to. But uh, if you look at and think about this for a minute, this is the same UFO in six different pictures six different positions and yet you have a, a UFO that can actually shape shift. Uh, none of these images are look the same. They're all different. And if uh, somebody came up to me and said, well obviously those are six different objects, uh, I would have to show them the video to prove they weren't. And I do this for a very, very specific reason. Uh, there are metals out there that we're, we don't have in our possession uh, as far as uh, something that can be manufactured. It's called uh, memo uh, metals. And these are metals that can actually change shape and actually go into the water. We're talking about salt water and come out and fly into our atmosphere. And those metals, I am sure that our government has been testing the, the first day they got these craft uh, back when, 1945. Uh, a lot of people always say 1947, but I uh, always think of the Trinity crash, and uh, uh, that, that craft, uh, I believe, was uh, fully um, <clears throat> undamaged. It was, um, it was um, intact, fully intact. And I know that um, that was because the eyewitness is still alive today. Uh, he's, he's uh, uh, I believe, in his 80s, but he's still alive today. And that's what his conclusion was, that... Uh, this craft was not damaged. And um, I believe testimony from people who are willing to come out and say something and not want monetary uh, uh, 
in, in any way. Not want, he, they don't want to be paid. Um, they don't want to be out in the media. Uh, they just want to tell their story. And it's unfortunate that there are people out there who want to make money off these, uh, these stories. That ends our, our UFO show, but I want to uh, I do a, a community service here. I want you to, to take a look at this group here. <clears throat> I met them at the, uh, at the film festival here in Pahrump. And I thought this was a great organization. And <clears throat> what I'm asking for, the, for this organization is if, if there's anybody out there, whether you're in Pahrump or Las Vegas or wherever you may be, that can show some interest uh, in these future enterprising groups, um, these young adults are our future. Please support them by either phoning them or gmailing, and I'll, and I'll show that on the screen now. So let's go to the, the video of what I took out there. This is Awkward Silence 4-H Robotics out of Corrupt, Nevada. And you can see, these kids can do some crazy things with these robots. Very, very talented uh, young adults. And they're so smart. Just listening to them talk, uh, I can tell you that uh, these kids are going to go a long ways. And these are young adults. Uh, these are kids that are ready to graduate from high school. Uh, I believe some of them have just graduated from high school. But if you get a chance, please, please look at uh, look what they built here. Uh, this is incredible. This is not an erector set. This is a uh, mechanism. Everything in, uh, involved there. But you can uh, you you got the. Um, the gmail there uh, and please get in touch with these these very very nice uh, people that you got the two coaches there um, uh, Jason and Jennifer and uh, they're a delight to talk to please give them a call and let them know that you're willing to support them and I appreciate you watching the show and I'll see you next week uh, thank you very much have a good evening Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Pahrump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never-before-viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO We Want to Know and remember, yes, they are out there.